Well, how many years until Josh Allen became good? See, nobody talks about that. It was like one year. year. It was only like one year. It was one year. It was one year. Straight to the action. There's a lot going on. Trying to lock these reductions down. Right, call me John. I'm going to talk to Jared because he might keep me calm. Had my top pick for this week, but he bombed. Caleb said he had a weak week, but he's strong. Jonathan said he repeat. Now it's on. In love with the game. Who you got? Can I wait? Drop by by the dorm. Come and watch. It's the bait. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorn Debate Podcast, and welcome to our overreaction episode. Week two games are over, and now we are going to see... Uh, I'm going to actually name some things off, and the guys are going to tell me if if I'm overreacting, if I need to cool my jets a little bit. Uh, but first, I want to talk about a couple of things. One thing the viewers already saw in the beginning of this video. New intro for season five let's go new audio new video and the audio the song custom made courtesy of jonathan's brother darius dude Dude. darius thank you so much thank you thank you thank you uh he was amazing uh complete rap from scratch and we're so happy with it and we're so psyched to be using it for this season and for any other things that we do uh, throughout this season. So Darius, thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoy that intro and that song. Um, we're, we're in love with it. I listen to it all the time. Uh, and it just gets me <laughs> fired up, dude. It's just, it's so sick to have a custom song. It was song. so cool. Custom song. I love it. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, week two is over. It's currently Sunday at 821 Eastern Standard. So the Sunday night game is just um, commencing between the Bears and the Texans. But we're going to talk about this uh, 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. games, specifically the Ravens, the Saints, and a little bit of the Jags and Panthers, possibly the Rams. But I want to get into the game. Overreacting. Am I overreacting? I'm going to name out some statements and you're going to tell me if I'm overreacting or not. So the first one, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> am I overreacting? Ravens are in serious danger of missing the playoffs. John, am I overreacting? No, you're unfortunately you're not overreacting with that. Caleb? I don't think you're overreacting. Whoa, Jonathan. <laughs> You are overreacting a little bit. Okay. <laughs> a little, just not just Ooh, a little. Bit. I just did a little bit. <laughs> you're, just, you're overreacting a little bit. Just a hair. Now let me let me talk about this a little bit. Uh Ravens start the season 0 and 2. They lose at the Chiefs, which is understandable. Then they go home and play the easy cake walk Las Vegas Raiders. And they lose. They lose at home. Home to the Raiders. Gardner Minshew is their quarterback. I mean, it's almost unfathomable that they would lose this game. Their next three games at Dallas, the Bills, and at Cincinnati. Three, That's exactly it. Three tough games. I wouldn't be surprised if they only won one of those. Now let's talk about what what's going on. Like, what for for you, Caleb and John? Um, you're overreacting with me, right? Yeah, yeah. We Talk are. to me about that. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? In our boots. This this offensive line sucks. Lamar doesn't look right. What what are we seeing? Yeah, for me, it's it's the secondary. I mean, they they gave up a lot to the Chiefs. Worthy, a rookie, had two touchdowns. Rasheed Rice carved them up a hundred yards, multiple gains of 10, 20, 30 yards. And against the Las Vegas Raiders. Minshew attempted 38 passes. He completed 30 of them. That's Gardner Minshew, guys. And Zamir White and Alexander Madison are not a threat at all on the ground. So you know that the team's going to be coming out throwing the ball. You underestimate them. You're playing at home. It's your home opener. You don't even take them seriously. Justin Tucker does not look like the Justin Tucker of old. He missed that 56-yard field goal. And I'm worried about this team. Look at what Jared just said. Their next three games at the Cowboys. Cowboys are just coming out of a loss. They don't want to lose that game. Then they play the Bills. Bills are playing well right now. Then they go to Cincinnati and play the Bengals. The Bengals just played really well against the Chiefs. And then, you know, a couple games after that, they're at the Bucs. Bucs playing well. At the Browns. Browns always tough in Cleveland. So, 
I am really worried about this team right now. Jeez, if they don't beat the Browns, though, because I mean, I know the Browns are tough in Cleveland. They have that good defense. Jonathan, I know you're bullish on the Browns, but I, I know it's it's lore at this point that I love the dunk on the Browns. Uh, but like, if that's a, they're in one of the to, to bounce off what you're saying, they're in one of the toughest divisions, yep. you know, and one of the winning is like that that category. The reason it's, it's two weeks in, so there's still chance to do it. But the reason I don't think you're overreacting is for all the stuff that John said, and from what I've seen is just kind of a lack of identity with the Ravens in, in small ways. Like I think Lamar has the gene to be clutch and he has been clutch, but the past two weeks things just haven't been falling for him. I know that can change, but it's like you add to the fact what we talked about last week is they have Derrick Henry. They have Zay flowers. Like I could see if they go with a def- with an offense that goes towards flowers a lot. Cause he's starting to show up and be their guy. Uh, it could work, but fundamentally it's just like, what's their identity as a team? You know, I, I there's a couple of decisions where it's like coaching wise, why are they doing it this way when they have a guy like Lamar, like Henry, like Flowers? And adding to it is just how intense the competition is and how their weeks looking forward is that I don't think you're overreacting that uh I think was it last year that this the division had a winner that didn't make the playoffs. Like they had a good record relatively, but just wasn't good enough to get in. That's the level that the Ravens have to compete at. And some of these decisions where they could have won the games if Lamar threw it right now. It's tough what he does. You know, I don't want to dog on him too much, but it's like, you got to get some at this point. They're kind of in a similar boat as the Bengals, but uh, curious what you think, Jonathan. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I understand all the issues you guys highlighted, but let's not get it twisted. This is just the second game of the season. There's several games to go. It's still early. They're still trying to, you know, get their offense going. JK Thomas is not there. You know, they're missing some key pieces. I think we should give us some time before we make that conclusion. Um, we saw Bengals struggle last week. Then all of a sudden this week, they're looking really good against the Chiefs. Maybe they hate the Chiefs so much that they play harder. I don't know. But probably we, we should give we should give the Ravens some time. They're still a good squad. Lamar is still MVP caliber. Um, and we do expect highly of him. But again, it is early. So we want to give him, cut him some slack. Harbaugh is a legendary coach. I think he'll get this thing turned around. But uh, yeah, so far it hasn't been looking great. And it's kind of concerning if you look at other teams in their division, being the Browns, Mm -hmm. the Steelers and the Bengals, they're all they've all won (laughs) except them. But I think it's too early to say it's going to hinder their playoff chances. I I think I think the Ravens will will turn things around. Now they play the Cowboys next week. Yeah. 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 The Cowboys are there. How do you feel about that, Jonathan? Yeah, I mean, they're they're unpredictable, unfortunately. (laughs) <laughs> like the moment you think they're gonna be I, I agree. going forward, they just let you down. Like, well, I don't want to go. Yeah, we'll get to, like, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get to get that. To yeah. the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of kind of touches against. Yeah, it, in the, they'd be zero and three if the Dallas, if the if the if the boys show up, you know. Yeah. And, and how does the AFC North look right now? Ravens zero and two, Bengals zero and two, Browns one and one, and Steelers atop at two and zero. Oh. Uh, Wow. What a, Justin with, what a world. Justin Fields with Justin Fields. That is. It's all the defense. Come on. Yeah, it is the, uh, the defense. <laughs> I like the defense in Boswell. I like the Bears. Yeah, yeah literally but... defense in Boswell. <laughs> They've scored one offensive touchdown and it's Darno Washington. Like, seriously. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That was like the Bears. I think the Bears didn't score an offensive touchdown last week, right? And yet yeah. I think ESPN's power index rated them higher for their offense. Right. And it's like, what? where are these analytics coming from? You know, you're just making up terms. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some analytics, but come on, you know. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a point is that the Ravens, if you're overreacting, maybe you should be over. Are you, Jared, are you, you know, this is, we're here for you. You're, for, you're, we're your friends, but like, are you overreacting about the Bengals as well? Is that a separate question? But you know, cause they kind of are in a similar boat. Maybe the division is not as strong as it once was. I was originally going to have the Bengals on here, uh, but they, they yeah. played well against the chiefs. Um, yeah. That's they, true. Yeah. Sorry. They don't have any wins. So it's not just the Ravens that don't have a win in the, right, it's also the right. Bengals. Apologies. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point but, for Jonathan and, that, that statistically not that and, far away. And the Bengals historically the, in, in recent years have started Owen to a lot. <laughs> Every time. So, and then right. they somehow either, they either come back or they don't. So I, if they start Owen three, give me a call, but Owen two, <laughs> this is right on schedule for them. Um, <laughs> no, Ra- Ravens, I think are in danger of missing the playoffs. That's why I put it down. That's why I'm overreacting. I think a big thing is that offensive line, the offensive line. I believe mm. it's two or three starters from Ravens last year are now gone. So that line just doesn't have the chemistry that it should have. Um, 
even though the rest of this team is, you know, Lamar Jackson, MVP, Derrick Henry, but it's all new guys. So I think it will take time uh, to fit the pieces together. Also, Patrick Queen, a huge leader uh, in the middle linebacker position on the Ravens defense is now yeah. gone. Um, yeah. So I think it's just going to be who's who's the leader in the group and finding time to get chemistry between this offensive line. I feel like Lamar's always running for his life. I think he had like 15 or 16 rushes in the Chiefs game, um, which, yeah, he's a great rusher. But over time, he's actually been rushing – less and been sitting in the pocket more but now he can't he's running for his life every every play so i think that's a result of the offensive line i think they'll get it together to possibly go to the playoffs but the fact that i'm even saying that is is very worrisome like like they they should be clearly uh beating a team like the raiders they are more they're further along than the raiders by far um let's talk about a team uh the saints the Saints, the New Orleans Saints, Ooh. highest scoring offense in the last two weeks. Um, <clears throat> Derek Carr, they set a they set a stat at that point in time in the game. He was fifteen. He had fifteen drives in two weeks. They scored points on all fifteen. Then I went back and looked. At the end of the game, he scored sixteen. Or sorry. In the last two weeks, he's had 18 total drives. He scored on 16 of them. That's crazy. Absolutely mind-boggling. The Saints offense, high-flying. Who would have thought? The defense, very, very good as always. My statement, tell me if I'm overreacting. Saints are Super Bowl contenders. Wow. Uh, Yeah, Jared, you're overreacting. (laughs) (laughs) Caleb, I want to say that you are, but I don't know what reasons I could specifically point to that would say like what will keep them from, uh, maybe John, you have some, but I'm like trying to think from what I've seen. I don't, I don't know if you're overreacting. I I would say you're, you're, you're not proper, properly reacting. You're properly reacting. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Jonathan, you are not overreacting. Woo. Oh, yeah. Wow. I am not nice. insane. So I'm the only one that can see the real future. Okay. <laughs> let's, <laughs> okay yeah. let's get Jonathan's thoughts because uh, some people may say maybe the Cowboys just had a bad day. Do we, are you going to give the Saints their flowers? <sighs> Unfortunately, I am going to give the Saints their flowers. Okay. Um, I've been saying this to you guys about Derek Carr. There's something about that leadership quality that he has. There's something about the intangibles that he has that can always cause him to have a, a decent year. I knew he was going to still be good when he came on the Saints. Uh, I think you guys said I was wrong. We'll have to go back and find you, those clips. You picked but, them to win the division. You were the only one. Lone yeah. wolf. And, and your lone wolf picks have a history of when they're, when you're the only one, there's a stronger chance that you are right. So I will give you that. <laughs> I don't remember what I said about Derek Carr. <laughs> yeah, there's usually, <laughs> there's usually a method of madness. Like Derek Carr... <laughs> Yeah, Derek Carr, like, he doesn't take baloney, okay? This guy's determined. He's a great leader. Um, you know, he, he goes on the fields with a purpose. He's trying to score on every drive. And so it's nice to see that all those qualities are finally coming into fruition for him. Um, he has the pieces he needs with Kamara. He has some decent receivers. Like, I didn't even know that guy. What's his name? R- Rashid something. Shahid. Shahid. What, yeah. What a name. Like, what a name. Like, this is the second week they've had great chemistry um, I was impressed. Even though I'm a Cowboys fan, I was impressed by Derek Carr last week and this week. Last week, it was just the Panthers. Like, okay, big deal. This week, it's against the Cowboys. The Cowboys can play. I don't think it was a bad week. They got their... Uh, behinds. Bologna, like they got, yeah, exactly. They got their behinds handed to them. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it, there's no... On the Cowboys rant, it all starts with Mike McCarthy. Okay. I said this at the end of the last season, but nobody listened to me. Jerry Jones, listen to what I'm saying. I'm your number one fan. I want the best for you. Listen to what I'm saying. Mike McCarthy should be gone. This is the second time in the past three games that they get they got blown out. We have top talent in Dak and, and Cooks and CeeDee Lamb and all these guys. What's the issue? It's the coaching. How can you get blown out? How can you get blown out like that? I mean, come on. Even at halftime, make adjustments. Do something. 
there was no answer. That's Mike McCarthy. Okay, we need to stop thinking it's a player. It's not Dak. No, it's Mike McCarthy. That's the nucleus of the issue. And the sooner the Cowboys realize that, the more successful we'll be in the postseason. Because I'm honestly, after seeing this, I don't care how well they do in the regular season. I'm afraid for the first round of the playoffs, just like last year. <laughs> I mean, I have no choice to be as a Cowboys fan because <laughs> what they showed us last year, no matter what quarterback is is in the game, Jordan Love, it doesn't matter. We could we can lose if we if we face Green Bay Packers, M- Malik Willis. I'll still be scared. We saw M- Malik oh. Willis did today. <laughs> The oh. Cowboys are unpredictable, and I've come to realize it's the coaching. That's what it is. If you have, <laughs> you don't have a good coach, then if your players don't get lucky, and you know, if you don't get lucky on some plays and things like that, I mean, you may lose the game. But if you have a decent coach that knows what he's doing, you're not going to lose games that much. Look at Andy Reid; he always finds a way to make games close, and that's why we love Patrick Mahomes. Okay, Patrick Mahomes potential to be greatest all the time. That's why we like watching the, the Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs because they keep games close. Even when they lose, they're going to put up a fight. That's great coaching. That's what it is. Mike McCarthy, he's not a great coach. That's what we're seeing. When are people going to open their eyes and listen to me? They should pay me in the Cowboys front office because I know what I'm talking about. Please listen to me, Jerry. All right. So, Jerry, uh, if he's listening, listen to Jonathan. John... Let's go back to the Saints. You hear Jonathan talk. The Saints, <laughs> I forgot about the Saints. The Saints sent him into a PTSD spiral. Uh, and you say, no, we're just going to overlook that. Cowboys just had a bad day. Saints are on a run. What, what's going on here? You, you don't believe in the Saints? Well, it's funny because Jonathan, literally we just talked about the Ravens and you were like, oh, guys, it's only been two games. It's only been two games. It's too early to say that. And now Saints, oh, it's two games. They're, they're, yeah, you could, they're going to the Super Bowl. Like, <laughs> no, this, this, I don't, no, no, like, this, I don't this, understand this, where you guys make these determinations. John, this is, no, this, is, this is a bigger margin of error. I mean, margin of victory, okay? First game and second game against the Cowboys good defense. Look, That's a bigger margin uh, of victory. Even, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about twice a week? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good. 47 points at 42 points for yeah, the that's... Saints. And this defense, we all know, is, is always Look, clutch and can rely on them. I'm not saying they, they're going to have, you know, start going downhill. I'm just saying it's going to slow down for them. Teams it, it, teams are going to figure out how to play them. It's not like they've changed anything. This is the same team from last year. Kamara is still there. Shahid is still there. Yeah. Olave is still there. Things are starting so, to flow. So it's not like it's not like they just like came up with something new. It's chemistry. It, all, they know how to play with yeah. each other now. Oh, intangibles because they had car his car was the newest addition to that squad yeah. for he's a been while. there for like three years though yeah, yeah but now, now he he understands the, the team, the team is the same what, what what changed from last year to this year oh now they matured the another year you know yeah uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's it's kind but for real I mean, so, like, so, kind so of did everybody else but Shahid, <laughs> Shahid is in his second year he was a rookie last year and wasn't Carr's first year of the saints last year no no that was well, second. even then, those rookie re- like usually sophomore year, these receivers kind of come into form. You know, you're seeing with a couple. Uh, I don't know. It's just like look if to say that they're going to go. They're the not Saints for two years. This is yeah. the second year. Second year. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. So now he understands. Look, the play. All right. So either way. First, all right. <laughs> that's that's a fair, a fair how can you say that? Jared. Okay. So what are the who are the top teams in the NFC? Cowboys, Forty Niners, Saints, Forty Niners. And Lions. Saints. But Eagles. You're not Bucks. Gonna... And, Bucks. E- and Eagles. And Eagles. Bucks. I'll put Eagles there. Bucks too. The Bucks are in the division. Exactly. Thank you for helping <laughs> me prove my point. So one of the toughest teams in the in the NFC is in their division. And then there's three others, the Lions, Eagles, and, and 49ers. They're, they can't they can't. But they're the best them. right now. Right they now. The most is points. right now, is the right now lost. Super Bowl. Is I right mean, now Super Bowl. <laughs> Is right like, now Super the 49ers Bowl? lost. It's, 49ers it's lost. the second the game Lions of the season, lost. bro. Their right. top two teams just lost. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the, the The Cowboys know, stuck That's right now. The Cowboys <laughs> stuck right now. What does that the do Panthers with anything? stuck right now. The Cowboys are playing the easy the teams. Teams. They're, they're, getting, they're, they're attacking getting, the Cowboys dude, in frustration. They're getting Fuck. these teams at their lowest. This is the lowest the Cowboys will be all season. This is the lowest the Panthers will be all season. Well. I couldn't say that for the Cowboys because you can, like Jonathan okay, said, you never know when they'll disappoint you. Next, oh. next week they play Eagles, then they play mm-hmm. Falcons, Chiefs, and Bucks. If they win three of those, I'll say you guys are right. If they win the Eagles next week, we you have to say we're right. 
Yeah, no, they me? could do that. They could do that because Falcons, they're at, they're at home. So I think I think it, this is going to ride into next week. Um, so that's a tough game for the Eagles. I, well, the reason I kind of I I, I wanted to because it is week two, John. Your logic of like we're, we're not overreacting, reacting with two weeks of information is it's like fundamental. It's a game, so we're also playing a little bit. But like thinking for a Super Bowl team, they have a great running back, solid quarterback. Um, defense has like legit matured more. Like they've had a strong defense and those guys get better as well as the other league, but the rest of the league. But like, I'm just looking at every piece compared to some of the top teams. And I'm like, they are in a position where they could win a lot of those games. Like right, they have the strong the, core no, to do it. You know what I mean? like, my question is what's the difference between the saints and the bucks right now? The Bucks yeah. also haven't made many changes. They matured another year. They're two and zero in the same division. They've right. beaten good teams. They just beat the Lions, which is probably well considered better than beating the Cowboys, even though the Saints did it by a better margin. So yeah, it's the like, what's it, I, like why then why then why aren't we saying yeah, no? It's Bucks domi- going to the it's Super like Bowl. domination, like Jonathan yeah. said. Right. The margin of victory is yeah. like well, convincing. You yeah. got to pay what you attention. Said. Yeah, it was overwhelming. The domination I mean. and the identity, like the way they play, it's like. It's who they are. Like they know who they are, which is valuable in football. And it's kind of like loose, like not really analytical. But when I see them play, like it, Kamara has been amongst like the top ten or five fantasy scorers in the past like three years or four years. It's like he's not, but like McCaffrey every year has been the number one pick, right? But like you look at the long like a dynasty league, Kamara might have have him beat. And it's like I'm just saying that they've been Car- quietly really consistent, yeah. and they're just cons- continuing gonna to be see. themselves. You're right, going to well, see. Like, the, one of the first Car- year the Bucks are dominating the way they are, whereas like no, the Saints year, they, have the pieces. Last year they were the Bucks were good, but anyway, yeah, they, they beat the, the Eagles is, in the playoffs. But we also, Car- also saw is that not, coming. Carr is not the the quarterback that's going to take him there. He's just not. I know. I I like I like his leadership and stuff like that, but. Right. I've seen multiple times of him in the fourth quarter being like scared. Like if, if somebody, if a team <laughs> shuts down Kamara, I don't know if he's going to know what to do really. He, you know, he, he reminds me of, you know, like Kirk Cousins, his first year at the Falcons right now, like Cousins has the capacity to do it. He's like, he's not a, he's not an S tier quarterback, but he's elite and on a good day. He could win the games. And I feel like Carr is a year ahead in, in like a second year at the saints and has that same, like he can do it. He's not a, as consistent as some of the other guys, but he's a veteran. I, he's a yeah. veteran. We gotta gotta respect him. He had, he had a bad <laughs> year last year and the year prior, and the yeah. year prior to that one. But you know, he can still <laughs> come around. Geno Smith you, came around. Derek Carr can come around. Uh, right, all right. right, Baker. On to the last, the way it looks right now. The last topic. Oh yeah, Baker as well. Uh, talking about two quarterbacks, two number one picks, folks. Am I overreacting? Trevor Lawrence and Bryce Young are officially. Busts, John. No, I don't think you're overreacting, Caleb. It's tough. I, I think you're half, half there. I think you're half. Oh, right. Okay, so you believe one of them? Half, yeah. half sees. Okay. Yeah. I wish I could say my reasoning and all that right now, but I'll just go ahead and say what we're saying. Um, you're wrong. Wait, you're overreacting. I am. So no, <laughs> neither. <of them. laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> it's a simple game, Jonathan. Am I overreacting or not? There's no wrong answers. <laughs> you're wrong for feeling this way. My feelings. You're are wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what an answer. I mean, come on. Uh, and you are going to get to say your reason. I don't know why you said you don't. you're not going to say the podcast. <laughs> Go ahead, right now. <laughs> so it's like you're telling him a breakup with a girl. It's like I, I don't want to tell you this. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> Caleb, what half am I right about? Am I overreacting about Trevor Lawrence? Am I overreacting about Bryce Young? I might be. I might be joining you in one of them because I think it's a most. It's a gut feeling, but I think. Trevor Lawrence is not turning out to pan out what we thought he could have been. And young is like, I, I'm not trying to make a joke, but he's still young. Like there's still chance for him to bounce back he can and, still, and grow. He can but, still grow like height. Yeah, height but wise. Lawrence, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that too, you know, I'm not overreacting, <laughs> you know, but I feel like with Lawrence, I just been, I've been calling the Jags for a couple of years, dark horses. And I've seen some of the gameplay, not as much as I'd like to for this season, but just, 
like, I think they have a great coach in Doug Peterson. They've had capital to work with and flashes of greatness. And, and, you know, they've had teams, but just some of the passes I've seen Lawrence do and the expectations that he was into that, like, I don't know. I haven't seen a curve the way I've seen it with other quarterbacks at his stage. And yeah. so that's where I'm like, I hate to say it cause I want him to succeed, but from what I've seen, I gotta, you know, I just, I think, I don't know if he's a bust, but maybe he's on path to be a great backup, which I don't, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but like until he gets some of these other clutch, I don't know, these, these more dominant position identity as a quarterback, that's just how I'm seeing it. Yeah. I think it's, uh, the reason I put it down was, was for that reason. I mean, we've seen what four, four years of, of Trevor Lawrence. He had one playoff win, one playoff appearance. Um, I wanted to look at, uh, the last, seven games for Trevor Lawrence. So five games last to end the, the season last year and two games this year. He's gotcha. 0 and seven. He's 0 and seven in the last five games. Plus the two this year. Um, he's has nine touchdowns, seven interceptions in those seven games and a QBR wow. of 42 and a half, which would rank around 28th, 29th in the league. It's during that, during yeah. that span. Um, the crazy part for me in this whole thing. So this, this year he's had one touchdown, two games, zero interceptions, just, just blah. Uh, <laughs> they have him under contract till 2030. I mean, I'm Ooh. looking at him now, 2024 and saying, I don't know if he's the guy. I don't know if he's the franchise guy. He might be above average at best. And the Jags just sign him till 2030. So that's concerning yeah. for on the Trevor Lawrence side. Um, and the Bryce Young side, I'll give you that, Caleb. There isn't a lot to go off of. He doesn't have the weapons. And I guess that does kind of play into the Trevor Lawrence debate where Lawrence had Calvin Ridley last year. He's got Christian Kirk. He's got Evan Ingram. He's got Travis, or Travis Etienne, who's his college buddy, already had chemistry with in the backfield. Yeah, and, and Brian S- Thomas. Jr. Brian Thomas, a rookie. I like him you a just, lot. You I just think, don't yeah. see it click with Trevor Lawrence. And mind you, Trevor Lawrence, when he was a first pick, he wasn't just the first pick. People were waiting years and years tanking for <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. They thought he was the consensus yeah. number one quarterback taken in that draft. First pick without question. And now you're looking four years later, five years later, and you're like, this was the first pick. He looks like... Goff when he was on the Rams, you know, it's like that trajectory. Um, yeah, and then, yeah. then Goff got traded and now, now he is what he is. Maybe that that's, you can improve. Yeah, maybe that has to happen. Maybe he's gotten too comfortable. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's bad for Trevor Lawrence. Bryce Young, I will say he looks terrible, but the weapon and the Panthers just the, stuck the, like we know from this, the from know? the top down from the top. Down. Is, yeah, but Jonathan, give me give me your thoughts. You say I'm wrong for feeling how I feel. <laughs> Yeah. How am I wrong? <clears throat> First of all, those two aren't busts. I mean, this is a team game, folks. Like y'all just discussed. Give them the proper resources and they'll flourish. I saw I saw Trevor Lawrence these past couple games. Yes, you know, they've lost, um, especially the recent game. Uh, that was a terrible way to lose, but he still has promise. He still has potential. Bryce Young, the yeah. Panthers. NFL teams, NFL GMs, look out for me in the front office, okay? You recruit me to be part of your front office. I know what I'm doing. For example, 49ers. Why don't you trade for Bryce Young? Whoa. And make him the backup of Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's going to choke sooner or later. And we know he's not the guy. That oh, make, make, make still on football. this? Trade for Bryce Young. <laughs> make Bryce Young. This is what's going to get you in the front office? Yes. Trade for <laughs> Bryce Young. Bryce Young is talented. His team around him sucks, and it's unfortunate. He's not a bust, Jared, just because yeah, his yeah. team sucks. He has potential. He's he's great. His team, the team around him sucks. He's too young. He's, he's too young, yeah. The yeah. team around him's not good. There's only so much you can do. You expect one person to change the whole franchise. That's not how it works. That's, it's it, you know The whole culture has to change. The coach has to be a good coach. The players have to be good. If I was 49ers, I'd, I'd you know... I'd welcome people that think like Jared and think that Bryce is a bust and trade for Bryce Young and make him the backup. But okay. sooner or later, Brock Purdy's not going to be able to do the things that Kyle Shanahan wants me to do in terms of additional 
ways to open the offensive um, playbook. Because right now, Shanahan's limited to a few things that Brock Purdy's good at doing. But with Bryce Young, you're talking uh, read options. You're talking about more additional plays you can run. He can run, but he can also throw the ball well, and he's accurate. And he has the football IQ. His team just sucks. Trade for Bryce Young. 49ers, trade it for Bryce Young and make it a quarterback competition. Let Bryce be the backup for a few games, see what happens. But in the back of your mind, you know that Bryce is going to be that guy for the future. Okay. <laughs> if you want to win multiple Super Bowls back to back to back, the Chiefs are about to do that. If you want to compete against the Chiefs and stop their reign, trade for Bryce Young. You can't win it with Brock Party. Look at what he did today. That was an embarrassment. Trade for Bryce Young. He's not a bust, he's legit. Trade for Bryce Young. John, yeah, it's too early to call him a bust. John, but, do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to take yeah, that one? I mean, John, I, I'm not even going to start going down the 49ers road with you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I'm going to save that for I'm another tempted, time. Though. But really what tempted. I will say is that I I sort of agree with the temperament that you know it's it is a little early, but I I agree with Jared in the fact that like for one of these players to have like to change the trajectory of them not being a bust because like Caleb said, like like Trevor Lawrence is on that trajectory. I believe that Bryce Young is on in that trajectory because he only has mm-hmm. one game in his career with 300 passing yards. Like I, I, I know he doesn't have a great team around him, but at some point you got to like make something out of nothing like, and he's never done it. So I still, I think he's on that trajectory and I agree with the fact that if one of these two is going to be considered not a bust, I mean, they both went as the number one pick, right? And they were both touted as like the best player in the draft. So, yeah, I think obviously they've, they're have they below expectations for sure, but something significant would have to change. Either either they would have to change a team, they would have to get like a Hall of Fame coach, they would have to get like a st- superstar receiver. Like something significantly is going to have to change to help their trajectory. They're not going to change it by themselves. It's hmm. a fair point because I think to uh... – all the the trajectory is a great uh, analogy to use because young is still young. And with Lawrence, like, like like a thought experiment, like you'd probably want to take Stroud right now, the way they've been playing and nine and seven in the past seven games, that's an interception a game statistically, which is crazy. I know they had the great comeback against the chargers, but we've also known that the front office of the chargers didn't know that, that Staley wasn't like that situation wasn't good overall, but they still was a great comeback in the playoffs. Uh, We were, we live streamed that. It was great, you know? Uh, But, like you take Stroud, you take Love, you take even like, would you guys think the ceilings are higher? Maybe not the consistency, but like, well, even the consistency might be better. But like Baker right now, or, or uh, like there are other guys that are uh, Gardner Minshew. Like, I'm not saying you'd want them as the franchise, but don't they show a little more promise think, than what we've seen out of out of I, Lawrence? I think that's a good example uh, to look at Bryce Young's situation and say Sam Darnold. Is with the Vikings now two and zero. Yeah, Baker Mayfield now with the Bucks two and zero. They both right. started like with the Panthers. Change. They both were with the Panthers <laughs> for yeah. a, a good amount of games and couldn't That's change the it. problem. So yeah, there's there's many things, and then you. I think the reason people want to declare Bryce Young a bust so fast is because of how much how fast CJ Stroud progressed, uh, being picked right after Bryce Young. If there wasn't a quarterback is- right there, I think people would let him develop. But I think it's now it's like, all right, is he is it actually Bryce Young now? It's been a year and two games. We haven't even seen a flash of brilliant a broken clocks right twice a day. He's only ever been right once. Like he's worse yeah, than like a broken Richardson. clock. Richardson and, and, had that 80 yard bomb that was like, yeah, yeah at least you see something, something like from Richardson. Right. Yeah, you, yeah. you haven't even seen anything. And to the point of like Stroud and Love, do, you, do we really think that Stroud last year with Nico Collins and Tank Dell, like he made Tank Dell? And mm-hmm. what, and, no, and Nico no. Collins. Nico Collins and Tank Dell aren't like light years better than Adam Thielen and whoever else. Like Thielen's still decent. Like I still Mm -hmm. think Tank Dell and Nico Collins are better. But still, like my point is that Jordan Love threw 35 touchdowns last season and was like second in the league with – and he basically – nobody knew who Jaden Reed was before. Dontavion Wicks, Romeo Dobbs, (laughs) and Christian Watson was hurt the whole year. How did he throw 35 touchdowns? So that's what we're talking about. All right. Well, uh, Jonathan, you want to have last word or now or we can wrap it up? Yeah, Jonathan, yeah, what do you think about Lawrence, though? Because you mentioned a lot about Young, which I think is fair. But what did you say about Lawrence? Lawrence, he's still young, Jared um, and Caleb and John. He still has okay. some experience. Um, 
to, to gain. And he's he's accomplished. I mean, he went to the playoffs. He, Jared, you out of all people, he, you know, he it was a three touchdown comeback against the Chargers. But he also okay. had four interceptions. Okay, but oh, he, yeah. but coming back in the second half, <laughs> that was first half. Second half, coming back and winning in the playoffs, that's huge. You can't let somebody go because of that. That was that's not a that's that was two brilliant. years ago, though. Uh, but he still, <laughs> hey, if at least it was a flash of brilliance. Really. It's a flash of brilliance. That's to be fair, yeah. And so Calvin Ridley's gone. That was a huge target for him. Okay, yeah, um, dude. This it's a situation. You talk about Jordan Love, John. You talk. About, it's situational, guys. It's a team game. We can't just say because. Um, the team's not doing good. This guy's a bust. No, you have to look beyond that. These guys are professional athletes. Um, I haven't seen anyone that's a bust right now. That's why the NFL is so entertaining. They're all good. It's just the teams, some some of them suck right now. The Panthers suck as a whole. Bryce Young is exceptional talent. Trevor Lawrence is exceptional talent. Okay? Uh, they need to get better pieces around him. I think that's what the issue is. Um, I don't know if they have a go-to receiver like Calvin Ridley that could catch anything that comes his way. I don't know if they have that right now. They need things like that because that can make a difference. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's my that's my spiel. Okay. I think I think before, while while we wrap this up, I think my um, one of the things I look for, and not only just a quarterback like rookie or, or wherever, but a uh, number one quarterback. You look at Josh Allen, what he's doing now, lost all his weapons two and zero. You know, that's that's when you look no, at you can't do that. Can't do that. Why not? How many years, quarter, how how many many years until you elevate became, the receivers? Well, how many years until Josh Allen became good? See, nobody talks about that. It was like one year. year. It was only like one year. It was one year. It was one year. It was not. It was like <laughs> two or three years until you Josh Allen's good. low was lower, but he's, he's his accelerator, his trajectory was so high, and it stayed this high. No, you know, we, we all thought, give no. it two years. It's been longer. Guys, long let's be honest with ourselves. When he when he first came to the league, we're like, all right, this is just another Bills quarterback that's gonna suck. We all we no, all thought that. Yeah. no, we did. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he's in the top ten. You got I know. I think Jonathan is right about. He yeah, made the on. playoffs though. No, he yeah. His Dude. first year, he was not he, like the turnaround was actually. You guys don't remember this? Because he got turnaround in the second year. Yeah, but he's also legit. But his, like how low he was the first year, it, I, I got. I, I remember. He John, was I remember low, what you're talking about. Is, like, but was. that was only one year. Trevor Lawrence and Brady yeah, yeah. were more than I, one. I, exactly. Yeah, I don't think it transfers. Years. But that is a. It was a couple okay. years. It was a couple years that he was a little. Shaky. No, it wasn't. It was one. <laughs> it was one, like, maybe two. Yeah, because the second year in 2019, they made the playoffs. They lost in overtime to the Texans. Like, but right. that's just not watch. Wait, 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 wait. Talk, talk. Who beat him? Who beat Josh Allen? I want, I want to hear you say it. What does it matter? No, I want to hear you say it. Who what is beat it? Deshaun Watson? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Deshaun, you Deshaun, said it. You Deshaun, said it. You said Deshaun it. Beat it Deshaun Watson? Allen. Deshaun beat Who Josh is Deshaun Allen. Watson? Yeah. Yeah. Deshaun yeah you want to talk about Deshaun? He he plays like crap, dude. They, he's they, awful. They today. He's awful. He's <laughs> awful and you know it. I don't even want to defend him. He's got another assault case. I'd take Lawrence case. over him. He's got another one. He's got more assault cases than touchdowns in the last three years. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's until proven guilty, Jared. And it's until proven guilty. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, these are these are alleged. Well, I guess the cases aren't All allegations. I'm saying. It's cases. But. Deshaun I'm beat saying. Josh Allen that second year. So, I I mean, anybody can get lucky and make the playoffs. Right, go go watch that around. highlight, all right? Go watch Let's that just highlight. Say, Allen, Allen was not getting commercials his first year. I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm just talking like a crazy person, right? But the vibe in the NFL was he was not a superstar exactly. until at least a year or two. But, if you, but I think Lawrence has been too long, Jonathan. Exactly, like, I, exactly. But Lawrence has had commercials from day one. Like, that's the standard. If you're, I don't mean, if, I'm, I'm speaking colloquially. I actually don't know if they had commercials. If you're a number one pick, you're supposed to make everybody else better around you. You can't be like, oh, I, I need to wait for more more weapons. He has Travis Etienne, his college buddy, Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley. When he had Calvin Ridley, he still didn't do anything. Like they that's what I'm trying to say. He came back from a that was two years ago. Charge. That was two years well, ago, not something. last year. He, said he, didn't do it, he did something. Yeah, but we know the Chargers aren't. <laughs> we, we a knew competitive this. league, guys. It's not gonna be yeah, tough. Look, to, look, look, I want him to do well. He got Dan, his money. Look, I'm happy. Look, Daniel Jones even won a playoff game. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'm ending on that. So, I'm ending on that. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. By John. All right, that's it. Giants. We gotta cut it off. Thank All you, right. John, for that. Close backup. us out, John. Oh man. Silence. John well, with the heater. Because well, we're closing. Right? All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. That is our overreaction episode. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 5,000 subscribers here on the channel. Uh, if you're not following on TikTok and on Instagram, bro, 
you're overreacting because you need to go over there <laughs> and follow us on TikTok and on Instagram. Uh, John is doing live shows every Sunday morning, so make sure you go on there, subscribe. Hit that, uh, what is it, a reminder for your live shows at 1145 Eastern Standard. So please make sure you're watching out for that on the TikTok. All of that is in the bio. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And as always, we'll see you guys next week.